This is Barry Zalma speaking for Claim School Incorporated's blog, Zalma on Insurance. Today we're going to speak about the attempt of a plaintiff to create an ambiguity that didn't exist and why there is no breach of contract, there can be no bad faith. Failure to read a policy became fatal to an insured's claim because he didn't buy the coverage that he needed for the purposes for which he intended to use his property. In Michael Nyakui v. Safeco, a December 19, 2022 decision of the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Texas in the Austin Division, the magistrate judge made recommendations to the district judge regarding Safeco's motion for summary judgment. The plaintiff sued his insurance company, Safeco of Indiana, after his property damage claim under his landlord protection insurance policy was denied. Three buildings were located on the property, two dwellings to be rented out as residences and a main building that could be used for commercial purposes. Plaintiff contended that he bought the property with the intention of opening numerous rental properties and utilizing the main building as a community center to which the space could be rented out for various meetings and parties. After buying the property, plaintiff alleged that he began using the main building for commercial purposes and not as a residence. The policy provided coverage for certain accidental direct physical loss to the dwelling and other structures on the property specifically excluded coverage for property used for commercial purposes. Section A of the policy provided coverage to the dwelling on the described location used principally for dwelling purposes. The policy excluded coverage to other structures used in whole or in part for commercial manufacturing or farming purposes. Plaintiff alleged that on February 20, 2021, the main building sustained direct physical damage as a result of a severe winter storm with extensive interior damage including walls, ceilings, flooring, and fixtures due to a storm-created rupture in the ceiling. Plaintiff alleged the damages to the main building was approximately $24,326.39. On April 16, 2021, defendant denied the claim on the basis that it was unable to identify any hail-related damages to the property. Plaintiff sued, alleging breach of contract, common law bad faith, fraud, and violation of Texas statutes. Texas insurance law, however, because the case was removed from the Texas state court on diversity jurisdiction, its substantive law applies to the decision of the district court. Texas law directs courts to apply a burden-shifting scheme. Initially, the insured has the burden of establishing coverage under the policy, and if it does the defendant must then prove that the exclusion applies. Plaintiff alleged that the defendant wrongfully denied and mishandled his insurance claim. However, he was unable to prove that the policy, which contained a provision excluding coverage to other structures used in whole or apart for commercial purposes, def that it was not. Defendant argued that this clear and unambiguous exclusion barred coverage under the policy because it is undisputed that the plaintiff used the structures as an event center for commercial purposes. And plaintiff even admitted that he used the main building for commercial purposes and not as a residence. But he claimed that that exclusion was ambiguous. Plaintiff argued that the commercial purposes exclusion in the policy was ambiguous because it failed to define commercial purpose, and thus the court must interpret the exclusion in favor of coverage. 
The court found that the plaintiff failed to show that the commercial purposes exclusion was subject to two or more reasonable interpretations and thus did not show that the exclusion was ambiguous. Importantly, plaintiff admitted he used the main building for the buying and selling of services. Plaintiff did not dispute that the policy clearly and unambiguously excluded other structures on the property that are used for commercial purposes. And plaintiff admitted that he used the main building for such purposes, renting out the building as an event space in exchange for a fee. The magistrate concluded that the policy does not provide coverage for the main building, and the plaintiff cannot show that the defendant breached the policy. The fact that the exclusion did not define commercial purposes created no ambiguity since the facts fit the ordinary meaning of the language used. Plaintiff then tried to use waiver and estoppel to create coverage, by arguing that the defendant should be stopped from relying on the commercial purpose exclusion under the policy because it did not do so in its initial denial letter on April 16, 2021. Since the defendant did not seek a forfeiture of the policy, but instead argued that the policy does not cover one of the three buildings on the property, the defendant continued to provide insurance coverage to the other two buildings of the property until plaintiff personally terminated the policy in June of 2021. So estoppel was not established. In Texas, as in many, if not all states, the doctrine of estoppel cannot be used to create insurance coverage when none exists by the terms of the policy. Waiver and estoppel may operate to avoid a forfeiture of a policy, but they have consistently been denied operative force to change, rewrite, and enlarge the risk covered by the policy. In other words, waiver and estoppel cannot create a new and different contract with respect to the risks covered by the policy. Consistent with that precedent of a Texas Supreme Court, and because the policy excluded coverage for property used for commercial purposes, and since the main building was used for commercial purposes, the doctrine of waiver and estoppel cannot be used to create coverage. Because plaintiff's breach of contract claim failed, his claims for bad faith and statutory violations based on coverage issues and the denial of his claim also failed. As a result, the magistrate judge recommended that the district court grant Safeco its motion for summary judgment and dismiss plaintiff's lawsuit. In my opinion, plaintiff knew he intended to use one of the structures of the property for commercial purposes, yet purchased a policy that excluded coverage for damage to that structure. Failure to read the policy when purchased. Failure to explain the need for coverage of a commercial facility when acquiring the policy was clearly the error of the plaintiff. A homeowner's type policy that required actual residence and use of a residence with a commercial use exclusion is not the type of coverage plaintiff needed. He only covered the two dwellings, but did not protect the structure intended for commercial use. He may complain to his insurance agent, but the agent probably just purchased the coverage that the plaintiff requested. This video explaining again the problem with not reading an insurance policy and trying to change the meaning of the policy once you have a loss with claims of ambiguity and waiver and estoppel just does not work. This video was adapted from my blog, Zalma on Insurance, which is available free to anyone who clicks on the URL zalma.com slash blog. It's also available 
for subscriptions so that you can be advised of every blog post as it is created, usually five a week, sometimes even more. And you can subscribe to the videos on YouTube or on Rumble.com. And if you do view these videos, please click on the like button at YouTube or the rumble button on rumble.com. And if you found these videos to be useful to you or to your colleagues, please let them know so that they can also subscribe to the blog and the videos. Thank you for your attention.